So guys, uh, the topic today is skewness. Like we are going to have a detailed discussion on skewness. Now what is skewness? Skewness means lack of symmetry. And what is symmetry? Okay, now symmetry means things are balanced on both sides. So if you fold a piece of paper in such a way that one half coincides with the other half, we can say that we have symmetry. Uh, to understand symmetry, think of a seesaw that you have in a park. A seesaw is a long board that is balanced in the middle by a fulcrum. And when both sides have the same weight, the seesaw stays leveled and stable. So imagine you and your friend want to play on a seesaw. And if both of you have the same weight, then the seesaw is going to be balanced. This is what we call symmetry. Things are balanced on either side. However, if one person is heavier than the other, then the seesaw will not be balanced anymore. It will tilt towards the heavier person's sides. You know, the heavier person is going to come down, the lighter person will go up. And this is an example of asymmetry, right? So when your seesaw looks something like this, heavier person is here. Heavier person has come down and the lighter person has gone up. Right, so when your seesaw is something like this, then we would say that this is an example of asymmetry. And asymmetry, you know, the other name for that is skewness. Okay. So, you know, symmetry is when things are balanced on both sides. And asymmetry or skewness is when things are not balanced on both sides. That's the basic understanding. Okay. Now let's speak of symmetry in a return distribution. So if we have a distribution of uh, stock returns. Right? So if the mean divides the distribution into two equal halves. That is, if we have equal number of observations to the right of the mean and equal number of observations to the left of the mean, we can say that the distribution is symmetrical. There are other properties of symmetry as well and we are going to discuss uh, those properties of symmetry with the help of an example. Let's say that stock has given a return of 4%. Twice, it's given a return of 5% thrice, 6% 4 times, 7% 5 times, 8% 4 times, 9% 3 times, 10% 2 times. Let's, let's make the histogram of this particular frequency distribution, right? So what is a histogram? In a histogram, you are going to have frequencies uh, on the y-axis and you are going to have observations on the x-axis, right? So you are going to have observations on the x-axis. Okay, so let's make this uh, histogram. 4% occurs twice, right? So let's make a bar to show the frequency. 5% occurs thrice. 6% 4 times. 7% 5 times. 8 4 times. So pardon me for my bad uh, drawings. 9 occurs thrice and 10 occurs twice. Right? So this is how my histogram is going to look like. Okay. Now if I draw a line that connects the top of these bars 
we are going to see a bell curve so let's draw a line that connects the top of these bars right so let's shade this in yellow okay so we see a kind of a bell curve now let's calculate the mean of this particular distribution right so let's do that in excel so that would uh, really uh, make things faster right so let's open a new sheet okay so 4% occurs twice 5 occurs thrice right 6 occurs four times 7 occurs five times 8 occurs four times right 9 occurs thrice and 10 occurs twice right so let's see if things are in order yes things are in order so let's calculate the arithmetic mean mode and median of this particular distribution so let's have the arithmetic mean here right so we'll calculate that using the average function And uh, let's calculate the median. And let's calculate the mean. So, mode is basically the observation that repeats the maximum number of times, or basically the observation that has the highest frequency. So notice that for this particular distribution that we have drawn, mean equals median equals mode. Right, so this for this particular distribution, mean equals median equals mode. Right, and this is your mean. This 7 is your mean. That's what we've calculated in Excel. 7 is your mean. This is your mean. Okay, so now look at this bell curve. Uh, you know, if you look at this bell curve, it appears to be well balanced on either side of the mean. It's not tilted towards any one side. It's balanced on either side of the mean. So it's like people with equal weight sitting on either side of a seesaw. This is something symmetrical, right? And uh, notice one more thing, uh, you know, your 8 is one interval to the right of the mean and 6 is one interval to the left of the mean, right? And both 8 and 6 occur with the same frequency, right? So, you know, for a distribution to be symmetrical, intervals that have the same distance from the mean occur with the same frequency. And this is an important property of symmetry. Also notice outliers occur with the same frequency on either side of the mean. So if 7 is your mean, then I would say that uh, 10 and 4 is an outlier. And notice 10 and 4 occur with the same frequency. So this means that if there are outliers on one side of the mean, there would be an approximately equal number of outliers on the other side. And, you know, uh, later on in our topic, we are going to say that our normal distribution is symmetrical in nature. So, guys, this bell curve that we have here is symmetrical and normal distribution is also symmetrical, right? Okay. So, basic idea is that we have discussed what symmetry is and uh, the properties of uh, a symmetrical distribution would be that the mean would divide the uh, the distribution in two equal halves, right? Equal number of observations to the right and to the left of the mean. 
uh, then the mean is going to equal the median is going to equal the mode and intervals that have the same distance from the mean would occur with the same frequency so this is these are important properties of symmetry right okay now that you are clear with what symmetrical is we are going to discuss what skewness is and we are going to talk of right skewed positively skewed distribution right skewed distribution is also known as positively skewed distribution okay and we are also going to talk of left skewed and negatively skewed distribution okay so we call this distribution right skewed because here the extreme values the outliers are in the right tail right and uh, we also call it positively skewed because you know we are going to have a positive outlier now what is a positive outlier a positive outlier is an outlier which is significantly more than the other observations in the distribution right so let's move on to excel and let's see how things look like right so say so this was my frequency distribution and uh, let's plot a line chart maybe a scatter plot on this yeah so you basically can see that you have a symmetrical distribution right and uh, seven is going to be somewhere here okay say let's add another return to this distribution right say next year we have a you know the stock gives a return of 15 right so now let's calculate the mean median and mode once again and let's say that 15 occurs once right so Okay guys, now my distribution is looking something like this, right, my distribution is looking something like this and you would notice that there is a long right tail, right, it's no longer balanced on either side, it has a long right tail and why do we have a long right tail, because we have a positive outlier of 15 in the right tail and why are we calling 15 as a positive outlier? because it is significantly higher than the mean and the other observations in the distribution and notice guys the mean has mean is now more than median and mode you know why is the mean more than median and mode now notice the mean is more than the median and the mode so see you know uh, we had discussed in the last class that arithmetic mean is sensitive to outliers outlier pull the arithmetic mean towards itself and in this case this positive outlier of 15 is pulling the mean towards itself which is resulting in an resulting in an arithmetic mean which is more than median and mode actually in a uh, right skewed distribution mean is greater than median is greater than mode but uh, we can't see this here because uh, we are taking a very small number of observations if i would have taken a larger number of observations we would have seen mean is greater than median is greater than mode right so the idea is that in this right skewed distribution you are going to see the outliers in the right tail and these outliers are going to be positive outliers this means that outliers are going to be significantly greater significantly more than other observations in the distribution okay and uh, 
second is that mean is going to be greater than median is going to be greater than mean. and the reason is you know why is mean going to be greater than median and mean because this positive outlier of 15 is going to pull the arithmetic mean towards itself and since it's going to pull the arithmetic mean towards itself mean is going to be greater than median and mean okay now we are going to discuss examples of a right skewed distribution okay now you know distribution of income in a poor locality so most people are going to have very low income right only a few people will are going to have very very high income right only few are going to have a very high income and their uh, you know people who have these high incomes their incomes are going to be outliers they are going to be positive outliers and they are going to be in this right tail okay also marks scored in a difficult exam most students are going to score poorly few students are going to score well and those who score well their scores are going to be positive outliers right their scores are going to be significantly greater than uh, the scores of other students in their class and these positive outliers are going to be in the right tail okay now we discuss left skewed distribution okay so let's draw this left skewed let's remove this return of 15 and let's say next year stock has given a return of minus 1% right and let's make this graph as well okay. minus 1 pulse right and remove this okay okay, okay now look at this uh, distribution guys it's no longer balanced right it's not balanced we know that right and uh, we see that we have a long left tail and why do we have this long left tail the reason is that we have a negative outlier of minus 1 what is a negative outlier an outlier which is significantly lower than the other observations in this distribution right okay so why does you know this negative outliers lies in the left tail right and that is why we are having a very long left tail right and that is why we say that it's a left skewed distribution we also call it as a negatively skewed distribution because uh, the outlier here is negative it's significantly less than the other observations in the distribution right and uh, also notice here that the mean is less than median and mode and why is it so because uh, this negative outlier of minus 1 is pulling the mean towards itself and that is why mean is less than median and mode and again the reason is that you know this mean is sensitive to outliers arithmetic mean is very sensitive to outliers outliers pull the arithmetic mean towards itself okay now guys actually in a left skewed distribution mean is less than median is less than mode but we cannot see this here because we have very few observations okay so left skewed distribution or negatively skewed distribution right so here outliers are going to be in the left tail and they are going to be negative outliers right basically your negative outliers outliers which are significantly less than other observations in the distribution and these negative outliers are going to be in the left tail that is why we are see, going to see a long left tail and that is why we will call such a distribution as left skewed and here naturally as we've already said mean is going to be less than median is going to be less than
the other thing is that uh, you know uh, give me examples of negatively skewed distribution so examples would be income distribution in a wash locality okay so people will have very high income in a posh locality on an average but very few people will have low income right and uh, the people who have low income you know those incomes are going to be you know people with low incomes their incomes are going to be negative outliers they are going to be significantly less than the uh, than the income of other people in that locality and you know these these low income people their incomes are going to be in the left tail right that is why we are going to have a long left tail and the other example of a negatively skewed distribution is marks scored in an easy exam most people will score well only few will score poorly those who score poorly their scores are going to be negative outliers negative outliers are going to be on the left tail right so this is our discussion on skewness hope you have enjoyed it i'll follow up with a video on kurtosis very shortly